they told me that I was the first one they've ever come across who's ever been able to walk. And um, the uh, uh, even though the fatigue, I'm still, you know, still fatigued. It was, it wasn't as, I didn't feel like I had a wet blanket on me all the time. Um, I didn't feel like something was kept holding me back. I felt like I could, I felt like I could go do a few things. Um, um, I wasn't having those energy crashes. Oh, something I didn't let you know. Um, and everybody listened to me. I was having over a hundred energy crashes a day Whoa. for years. Hey, this is Ari. Welcome back to the Energy Blueprint Podcast. For today's show, I have something that I've never done before. Uh, instead of interviewing some kind of health expert, functional medicine expert, nutrition expert, brain expert, something like that. Um, we are featuring, I am featuring, uh, someone who was recommended to me by one of our coaches, our lead coach, uh, Oliver Selway, who is basically one of his clients who has gone through the Energy Blueprint program and has a profound personal story of going through very difficult times and making a huge amount of progress through different methods. And Oliver basically reached out to me and, and suggested that I do this very atypical podcast uh, on this subject because Evans and the, the subject of today's interview is named Evans. Uh, his personal story is so interesting. And basically, we thought that there might be some nuggets of gold in here that may serve other people who are on a similar path, on a similar journey, going through similar kinds of symptoms and difficulties. And we thought it would be great for you to hear from Evans what has helped him on his journey the most. Evans, welcome so much to the show, and thank you so much for doing this. Uh, thank you, Ari, for having me. So appreciate it. Yeah. So... I would love to start out by having you talk about your story basically from the beginning. So talk about your early life uh, and some of the health challenges that you dealt with from a very early age. Okay. All right. Well, um, I, uh, now I'm, I'm gonna, to let you know something, um, right from the very beginning, um, I'm going to start with the, the brain retraining that I've done and let you know that through the brain retraining that I've done, uh, we don't talk about symptoms and, um, and by doing that, it's really helped me. Uh, but since I am on this, I am going to <laughs> talk some about symptoms. You're going to violate the rules. Me. I'm going a little bit, but because <laughs> I know that it's going to help other people um, but if, Thank you for doing if that. I don't go into total detail and you want me to, let me know that. Okay. okay? But I'm just going to hit the highlights. Okay. Um, okay, great. Um, when I was born, uh, uh, I I came out of the womb and they knew something was was, was wrong. Uh, there was an issue. And um, they pretty much told my parents that I would not walk. I would not talk um, ever. And, um, I did, I started, I started talking and started walking at, I think, 14 months. And, um, and, uh, I have a, a wonderful brain. Um, it was just my body, uh, there's something going on with it. Then around 10 years old, I oh, went hold on. To Evan, sorry. What, one second. Can, can you tell me a little bit more details about what what they they thought was wrong with you or what the diagnosis was or that sort of thing well, I was, yeah I, well they they didn't know they they didn't know i'm allowed to get to that <laughs> okay um Go ahead. yeah was, yeah 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 that's great though um yeah that for for 10 years i i we didn't know what what i what i had we just saw it um they and, saw it in in what way uh all my joints all my joints are fused. I can't straighten them. Every every joint I have 
is fused. I, I can turn my neck like this. I have very limited range. Um, my every joint I have, my knees, my ankles, my waist, um, everything. Wow. And um, so, and, and you then, still were you were still were walking at at uh, fourteen months. Yes, beginning to walk, and yeah, assuming I'm assuming now you're able to fully walk around. And what what's your level of functionality now? Now, yeah. Oh yeah, I can. I mean, I I'm playing pickleball. Wow. I mean, With I played. I, I, that's, that's amazing. I played. I played. Uh, Baseball, softball, yeah. I mean, I okay. So I so don't know why. Let's go back to ten years old. Sorry, I was just curious. No, you know, that's fine. You just, you just showed me, and for people listening, you you can't see the visual here, but um, he's got very limited ranges of motion in in all of his joints, and so I was just curious to what extent. I've never seen that, okay. before, so I'm I'm curious to what extent. Um, no, and the doctor, there is a the high doctors. level of, of or a normal level of function. Um, yeah. and, and moving around uh, as an yeah. adult but go ahead take take us back to sorry to to uh divert us for a second take us back to 10 years that's old. okay that's all right um well I, I was living uh in texas at the time and there is in dallas texas there's scottish Rite hospital and uh there they diagnosed me with escobar syndrome also known as multiple pterygium syndrome. Multiple pterygium. Is pterygium spelled P-T-Y? P-T-E-R-Y or P-T-R-Y. Uh, I think you're right, P-T-E-R. And, uh, but that's an eye condition, right? That's that's pterygium on the eyes. You're it's a different kind of pterygium? Different pterygium. Okay, yeah. and what is, what is that referring to? Well, basically that... All of my every joint um, is is limited. It's uh, in range, um, and then uh, my spine. I have scoliosis, and um, and my several of my vertebrae were fused at birth. Wow! And so instead of growing up, I started curving. Wow! And when I when I reached oh, 15, both forward or sideways or both? Um, well, I'll just show you. Um, like uh -huh. I stand. Yeah. So that, that would be considered a, a very severe scoliosis. I'm going forward and over. That's and when my, yeah. when my spine reached a 45 degree angle. Wow. Um, the doctors went in. And they can't, they couldn't straighten the spine yeah. because of the fused vertebrae. So they took a rib out. They, it's called an anterior spinal fusion. And they took, a, they cut a rib out and then attached it into my spine. So pretty much kept it from moving anymore. And um, so I am... I am the height I was then now. So I'm 4'11". How tall are you now? I'm 4'11". 4'11". That was the height you were at 10 years old? Uh, 15. Wow. At 15. That's when I had the surgery. Okay. So es tell me about Escobar syndrome. So what is that exactly? That is synonymous with this um, multiple pterygium syndrome? Yeah. Same thing? Yeah. It's another. It's okay. another name. It's like a... There are a couple. So I don't know much about it, Ari. When I, I'll just, <laughs> you would I'll think just if anybody you, knows, I've never heard of it, but you would think if well, anybody knows about it, it's got to be you. I'll just tell you that the doctors, it took them, it took them a while to diagnose it. Yeah, it sounds like it's it's an extremely rare thing that even they don't have much familiar with familiarity with. Basically, they told me that I was the first one they've ever come across who's ever been able to walk. Wow. Because because of the things they're able to do because I was born in 7 in 1976. Uh-huh. And and so they said we think that a lot of people who had this 
they didn't make it because because you know they didn't get the uh, medical help, and so they they died. Yeah. And plus, I did. I had a my my form wasn't as severe as others. Mm -hmm. Um, because my my brain was not affected. Um. Well, my brothers kind of said I was, but <laughs> <laughs> well, but but no, just that's just what joking. big brothers are for. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but uh, but it's just it's it basically in the body, and um, and so, but every but but um, it is nothing. None of my muscles relax. I'm always tight. I'm You're always, always tight. in tension. Yes, I just want to mention. One quick thing for those listening um, who weren't able to see the the visual of Evan's spine here because he just stood up and 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 showed us his his body posture here. Um, but when he said that his his form was not severe, that's apparently relative to people who typically have this syndrome. But I want I want people who are listening who can't see the visual here to understand his he has a a very severe curvature of of the spine. Um, Okay, so you've got this physical tightness in the joints, lack of mobility of the joints, tightness of the muscles. Um, take me through, I have many questions here, but uh, take take me through what seems to be the natural sort of next layer of the story for you. Okay, well, during the surgery, um, they had to deflate my right lung to get in there. Whoa. And, and when they tried to inflate it, it didn't really work. Wow. And so from the age of 15, uh, for, for many, many years, I was sick a lot and I went to the hospital a lot. And uh, sick in terms of proneness to respiratory infections or, or sick in terms of what? Uh, respiratory pneumonia, bronchitis, um, you name it. <laughs> wow. I got, okay. I got, Yeah. Did they get the lung inflated? Did it naturally inflate on its own or it stayed? Yeah, I have, right now I have about 33% lung capacity. 33% of uh, average or 33% um, of, of what? Of, of a normal quote. Of normal, okay. Yeah. So, so you have basically one lung. Am I understanding that correctly? One functional lung? Yeah. Yes. And yeah, but but they said that it doesn't, it's because of the crowding in my step back because of my shape. Yeah. Um, all my organs and everything is jammed together. Right. So, so it's what that one side is being compressed based on the, the structure of your spine and the, the, the torsion and the sloping forward, it's compressing the organs in a way that's preventing right. the lung from inflating. Yeah, I like the torsion. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, yes. You are definitely a medical person. I like it. Nice. Okay, um, so um, take me to so, the, the next layer of this story. Okay. Well, then that's that's really when the pain increased. Um, it, uh, you know, I really, I really didn't, I didn't notice that I had much pain, I guess. Because I, you know, I'm me, I live with me, so I don't really know anything else. Right. But that's really when the pain in the back and the spine started. Um, and it went up. When, and, with, uh, with the lung not being able to function properly. Well, no, more of the, the um, I think the spine, uh, when they, when they, when they uh, uh, put the rib in there. And they stopped the growth. Uh huh. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, the surgery worked. You know, it did what they wanted it to do. But I think it, the the sensory uh, signals and everything in my body, yeah, that went haywire. Right. And especially with the surgery, because they cut me. You know, they cut me from from here all the way in the back. They call it a baseball flap. And cut, so, you, cut you from the front of the ribs, like the sternum area, all the way around yeah. to the spine. All the way back. To wow. There. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So, and um, and I, I, there, I was in like a, they, they had um, put me in a, of a, a, um, a mold. They had made a mold 
So it would hold me in place. And I wore that for about a year, mm -hmm. um, but I could take it off. But they wanted to, they wanted me to have it on. So I didn't do any damage. Tell, tell me again really quick what they were trying to accomplish with that surgery. What, what was the problem they identified and what were they trying to solve? Stop the scoliosis. They were trying to stop the scoliosis. Yes. Okay. And they they clearly obviously did not succeed in that. Or no, they did. They, they, did. they did succeed in that. Yes. Okay. So they succeeded meaning that... You, they feel or you feel that your scoliosis would be much worse had they not done that? Yes. Okay. So there yeah. there would have been some kind of really maybe life-threatening outcome of that scoliosis that it would have been so severe that you, you can't function at all. Am I understanding that correctly? Correct. Yeah. Okay. It's at a 45 degree angle now and it would have kept going. I see. Yeah. So they they halted that progression at 45 degrees. They did. Okay. They did. Okay. They did. Very, yeah. very good. And you, maybe you're here today because of that. Oh, definitely. Okay. Definite. Yes. That's okay. one of the reasons. Yeah. That's one of. Okay. One of but, the, yeah. but, but the consequence also was that you have a, that's when the, the pain really started to accelerate for you. Yes. Okay. The pain and then and, and, and all the infections that I got, um, it just drained me oh, okay. many, many years. And, and did, uh, was that the only surgery you had? Did you have more surgeries? Uh, with that, that's the only one I had on the spine. Okay. Were there, there more surgeries later on in your life? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So, so, uh, well, I don't know if that's jumping ahead. So you take me to the next layer of, of the story okay. because it seems natural for you. Okay. All right. Um, then, uh, let, so I had the surgery in 1991 when I was 15. Um, then I was in college in 1996. And um, I was kind of amazed I was in college, but uh, just because it was so hard to do everything, you know, it just took so much energy. Uh, but then in 1996, I just crashed. My body just said no more. And uh, I uh, um, had to drop out of college and I started sleeping about 18 to 20 hours a day. Um, I did that for about a year to two years. So 90, 1997 to nineteen ninety. Eight ninety nine. Um, I don't remember much of those years. the The brain fog, um, um, the pain level was up. I, you know, uh, it was. I don't remember. But um, and then uh, I um, I I went to many doctors. Nothing. Nothing was helping. Uh, and then finally in 2002, I started seeing a naturopathic doctor and he started me on supplements and I was seeing more improvements than I had. Um, and um, so it did, it did help some and I'm thankful for at least that. Um, but then um, I, uh, in 2006, or really 2005, they found a uh, paranganglioma tumor in my neck. And they thought it was in my carotid um, artery, but it turned out to be on my vagus nerve. Wow. And when they went to go get it, um, they cut the nerve on my right side. Wow. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, I see the scar. See that? Yeah. And um, so... Um, by, but by cutting that nerve, um, it paralyzed my right vocal cord. Oh. And so I talked like that. I talked like that for, ooh, wow, that was 2006. And I think I had my first surgery to help repair, to at least get the talking, um, I think in 2009. Um, and that was, um, Ari, that was, um, that was hard for me. Uh, 
I mean, I'd already been through so much. Yeah. But I I sang all the time. Wow. Um, I I literally could I could hear the angels singing in heaven. I mean, I could, I could hear that and constantly. And then after the surgery, I couldn't hear that anymore. I couldn't hear any pitch. Uh, and wow. that's when that's when the rage started. Whoa. Okay. I got Tell me about that. Really, really, huh? Tell me about that. Um, uh, well, that was in March that I had the surgery. And then uh, by September, um, I let's just say that I, I got homicidal. Um, and uh, I realized that I needed help. Mm. And uh, in September, I started seeing a counselor. And that was so good. I'm so glad I did that. <laughs> and when was that? That would have been September, uh, September, October of 2006. Okay. And I had the surgery, uh, the parent going to remove it. Um, that was in March of 2006. And so the rage, and I look back on it now and realize that I was angry and frustrated about my life. Yes. But then when this all happened and I couldn't sing anymore, I couldn't sing out my frustrations. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't get it out. And it all just bottled up in me. And here we go. Yeah. You know, here a 411 uh guy who um people were like, I you would never hurt a fly. And I I I I got homicidal, you know, and, and, uh, and it just, it really shocked me though. It scared me. What um, can you tell me more about what was going on inside of you that led to that, that level of rage? I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. It, it, it was like, uh, I, I, like I told doctors, I said, I, I, I feel like I'm turning green. And my pants are ripping and and it's just this I'm I'm so angry and I don't really know why. I mean, I I know there are certain things that are happening, but it's like a switch has just turned on and I can't turn it off. Wow. I cannot turn it off and I'm and it's it's just it's it, it was a lot. I mean, it's, you were basically like trapped inside of this constricted body. And then now you have a brain, you have the desire to sing and you can't even do that. You can't express your thoughts. You can't sing. You can't express those emotions. It's like, everything's just like cramping down on you and constricting you. And I barely can talk. Yeah. I mean, I played, I played guitar. I played, I mean, I, I was very active i mean i and it was like everything just went and and i didn't really want to go anywhere anymore um and i really i didn't really want to associate with anybody anymore because I, I wasn't angry at them but the rage was so intense that it just it made it hard to relate with anybody yeah and so, um, but yeah, and then, uh, so how did you begin to dig yourself out of that situation? The, the counselor, he said, which is so cool. He, I had actually known him from church and he said, Evans, have you ever been diagnosed with PTSD? And I said, I said, well, I'm not a soldier. He goes, that, that forget that he was you're a soldier okay he said he said you have ptsd and said and so that helped me to understand he helped me understand more of what was going on yeah and and he helped uh me to to deal with it in a healthy way and i remember him telling me he said evans you've got it you're a jar let's say you're a jar and you are full up with with whatever you're full of okay anything that tries to go in you 
it could be a good thing. It's still going to overflow you. Mm -hmm. And he said, and, and right now it's coming out as rage yeah. and anger and, and just you're, you're pissed off. Right. And I, I said, yeah. And he said, okay, let's deal with that. Let's deal with that in a good way. So we did. And then um, after that, I did it with him for about two years and I still kept with him, but then I got involved in a thing called growth and healing at a church. And um, it was so wonderful. And I did that from about 2008 to about 2015. Mm -hmm. And that really helped me um, to be around other people that, that had other issues also, not like me, but um, just to, to deal with things in a healthy way and, uh, and to get out there. Even though I didn't totally feel like it, I wanted to do something. Um, and and that that environment was probably conducive to connecting with other people that people could you could relate to them they could relate to you better than in normal situations yes and I was able to be honest yeah and people didn't look at me like what <laughs> you 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 wanted to do what <laughs> mm. you know and and uh so I met some really wonderful people that I I'm still friends with today uh and so and um, but then um, in 2015, um, I was diagnosed with Lyme disease. Oh. Um, but I, I think I already had it for years. Uh -huh. Um, but finally, a doctor, uh, they did it. They did some stuff with me, and I got a official diagnosis of it. Uh -huh. Um, and I. In some ways, I I cried actually when they told me not because not because it upset me, but because I thought, all right, now we've got something we can do something with. We can. And I've got Lyme, and we'll take care of it, and I'll feel better. And what what were the symptoms you were dealing with for years prior to that? Well, chronic fatigue, mm -hmm. the pain, the 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 um, brain fog. Uh, the uh, dysregulate dysregulated emotions. Um, though, and then food. Oh goodness, food sensitivities. I could hardly eat anything. Wow. Um, and I don't want to get too graphic, but let's just say that I um, I live with constant constant gas. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just I. It's just it, it, I always hurt. You hurt um, inside from it, physically painful. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yes. And I, 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 during that whole time, I passed out so many times from the pain. Wow. I mean, it was a level, it was a level 10, you know, most of the time. Wow. And so I just, I can't. That's, that's internal pain, you know, from the digestive tract, or are you referring to pain from the spine or what specifically? Total, total body pain. I really don't know. Ari. Wow. wow. I don't know. I did just my whole my whole receptors, my whole body was inflamed. So we've got severe chronic fatigue, severe chronic pain, brain fog, brain dysregulation, the mood is out of control. Um and is there anything else that you think should be added to that? <laughs> um it well, like you know, because the skin, I could not. I I didn't. Anything that touched me hurt. Yeah. Um, and and I would, you know, in trying to sleep in my bed, um, I would sleep with several pillows, but you know, my because my back doesn't is not straight, you know, and so I needed like pillows. Um, so, so it would, uh, relieve some of the pain. Um, and I didn't, you know, I went bouts where I, where I slept all the time, but then I went bouts where I would be up for 36 to 48 hours. Wow. Can I, can uh, I ask you something? Sure. What, what made you keep going through all of this, through so many years of pain and suffering? You know, I mean, I, I, this is, this is obviously a, 
um, an intense thing to talk about, but I think a lot of people in a similar circumstances, a similar circumstance to what you went through might have committed suicide. What made you keep going? God. Mm. Um, he came to me in a dream. Uh, this was in 1997. And um, I'll just make make the dream shorter. So basically, I'm standing in front of a wall. And God says, what do you see? And I'm really close to the wall. I said, man, I, God, I can't, I can't see anything. And he says, step back. So he keep having me step back from this wall. And finally, I get back and I can see it's uh, the picture of Ulysses S. Grant all in his dress blues and he's on a horse and he's got his sword up. I don't know why, why that picture, I'm not sure. But he goes, Evans, it's always been that picture, but you couldn't see it because you were so close to it. Mm. But when you backed up, you could see it. And that's what's going on right now. You are totally in it. You're in everything. You can't see what's going on. But he, but he said, know that I have the big picture in mind. I can see it and just go with me. Mm. So please trust me. And I woke up from that dream and I was like, okay, God, I don't understand. But you tell me, you've shared with me that you give peace that passes understanding. And so, okay, I'm in. And because he said, I'm going to take care of you. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm in. And so that was it. And has he taken care of you? Yes. Mm. Yes, he has. Maybe not the way I wished, but um, I'm alive and I've met wonderful people along this thing. And guess what, Ari? We're, we're talking right now. So, um, I, I, you know, it's just, it's great. And, and, um, um, well, I'm starting so, to understand why Oliver reached out to me to have you on the podcast. Well, well, thank you to Ollie because he's I enjoy him. He's great. Yeah. So um, but um then I tried a lot of the line protocols. They they didn't they weren't working. Um and no medication, medical, uh the Western medicine, I wasn't getting anywhere with it. And so uh finally. In 2021, I found brain retraining. And um, I don't know if you want me to list, I won't list any of them. Um, Please, yeah, but, yeah. You can you can feel free to mention them. I've had oh, some of the okay. brain retraining experts on okay. the podcast. And, okay. Yeah. All right. I started in DNRS. Okay. Um, and I did that for over two years. Um, and I... I began eating, started eating a lot of foods. Um, my rage was dropping. Uh, I was feeling um, less stressed. Uh, I felt the internal uh, angst uh, getting better. Um, I was starting to see a light. Uh, the brain fog was decreasing. Um, um, I was still really, really tired though. Um, but, but I started to notice that my pain level was decreasing. Um, it was no longer a 10 anymore. It was getting to about a seven. Um, and I was like, this is great. A 10 to a seven is awesome. And um, the uh, uh, even though the fatigue, I'm still, you know, still fatigued. It was, it wasn't as, I didn't feel like I had a wet blanket on me all the time. Um, I didn't feel like something was kept holding me back. I felt like I could, I felt like I could go do a few things. Um, um, I wasn't having those energy crashes. Oh, something I didn't let you know. Um, and 
everybody listen to me. I was having over a hundred energy crashes a day Whoa. for years. And yeah. how does that manifest when you say a hundred per day? What, what were you, I mean, that's almost like what every, every few minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So what, Basically what, not just I something would, subtle, but something very drastic. noticeable. Yes. Basically, uh, you know, my energy level was already low, but then, I mean, I'd be like, I'll just show you, I would do this. And then <clears throat> I just felt like, everything dropped out of me was it Shut was it tiredness like you were falling asleep or no no you were, still, you were still awake but you had no physical energy i literally i'm just collapsing the floor wow and and finally finally i was in a doctor's office in my naturopath's office and i and i did it right in front of him and he goes okay <laughs> wow i just saw it <laughs> and I literally, I mean, when it happened, I can't think. I couldn't, I can't think, I can't process. Everything just goes dark. I mean, I'm still, I'm still there. But it just, yeah, it was hard. Yeah. And even even talking about it's tough. So yeah. um, yeah. So, but doing the brain retraining was helping. And it was helping to um to have a life that I hadn't had in a long time. Um, I mean, I, I, I did not ever give up, but there were times that I felt like, okay, God, you said you're taking care of me, but am I ever, am I ever not gonna feel like this? Am I ever gonna feel energy, which I'm really not even sure what that feels like anymore. Yeah. I don't know. So, um, so then, then I did that for two years and then God wanted me to do it, start another one. So I started vital side and, um, really enjoyed that one. Just, this, this is another type of brain retraining. It is. Okay. It is. And can, is. can you take, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Can you, can you, Tell listeners who are are not familiar with what you're referring to with brain retraining that the essence of what it's all about, and maybe you know, sort of give an example of sort of a, a practical method or something that's central to the the process of brain retraining as you're referring to it. Yes, um, it is. It's helping me to teach my brain and my body that I am okay. I'm okay. Whatever's going on, I'm okay. I'm not, um, whatever has happened in the past is not happening right now. Um, and we do visualizations that are, um, of good things. I talk about good things. I don't talk about my symptoms. Uh, we call them it's. Um, and then vital side, we call the diagnoses like Escobar syndrome. We call that bears, um, which really helped me because um, my my it teaches that the thoughts that I'm having are not my thoughts. They are things that are running. They're tapes. They're um, that are just going, and I don't have to pay attention to those. I can choose. I have a choice. Yeah. And so when those thoughts start going, I say, okay, I see you. I see you thoughts. And I'm not denying you're there. And I'm really not telling you to go away. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying you can be there, but I'm going a different direction. I'm choosing to go there. And I just keep doing it. When those thoughts come in, that you whatever you're you you stink, you're not worthy. Uh, you're going to be sick the rest of your life and you just need to go, no, oh, no, no, no. Hey, I am worthy. And so uh, I, I matter. And so that's where we're going. You know, thank you, God, for creating me. Uh, that, well, look at that beautiful flower over there. I mean, that's basically the things they teach us and they, you know, they go more into detail. 
Yes. But this is a, a, a capacity called metacognitive awareness. Metacognitive awareness, so you you become you become able to better see. It's very much related to also kind of your your dream, I think. Um, but you be, you become more able to see your own thoughts, observe your own thoughts, analyze your own thoughts, rather than just being sort of immersed in them. Uh, and and by having by building that meta capacity to see and be aware of your own thoughts, it gives you more choice of whether you want to actively be immersed in that thought or choose a, a, a different path. Um, right. Yes, and that's and, sorry. Go ahead. No, and and yeah, they tell um, there's a word they um, to be a curious observer. Yeah, they call called a curious observer, and so basically, there are times that I have literally like, okay, I step back. And I like see myself like I'm up here now mm -hmm. and I see Evans down there who's going through whatever he's going through. And I say, okay, he's going through that. Um, and, but I, but I am not, like you said, immersed in it, immersed in that chronic pain, immersed in those, those thoughts that are unhealthy, that are not helping me immersed in whatever's going on and i'm able to see beautiful things see lovely things and and make make healthy choices and and yeah, yeah. but it's it's one step at a time and it's and it's being okay with not with making mistakes i think um learning that i'm not perfect um and really i don't want to be perfect <laughs> so um and uh but one of the things that i i i think that has helped me because you asked me you asked me what how, how am i still here mm -hmm. um i think god has blessed me with a sense of humor um i never i never lost it mm -hmm. i i could laugh that's a feat in and of itself given what you've gone through Oh my goodness. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember there were several people that would, um, say, you know what, Evans, this is throughout my life. They'd say, you know, I, I should be the one cheering you up. And yet you're the one cheering me up. Mm, beautiful. And they didn't really know my story. I, you know, and, and that's, one of the things in brain retraining they talk about is is um don't go into the story mm -hmm. you know like i'm telling my story but you know you i am i am bigger than my story you know and i don't have to focus on that i there are so many parts of me um that are that are great um um i am not i wrote it down here um um oh uh, oh my my diagnosis my diagnoses do not define me mm -hmm. my symptoms do not define me what does define me well to me the lord defines me mm -hmm. and and he's the one that that i have that tells me i'm i'm awesome and so I'm like, okay, let's listen to that. <laughs> and so, so I do, I, yeah. I, yeah. And so, um, but, but then I did the vital side, which was great. And, um, which was really cool because I had been doing laughter yoga. Cause that's one oh. of the things we do is laughter yoga. That's fun. <laughs> and, um, I was doing that with Bianca Spears mm -hmm. and, um, oh, and then that's how I found out about Vital Side, um, because she's involved with 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 Vital Side, and so then it was kind of neat. I had been laughing with her on YouTube just one way, and then I actually got to talk with her, and I'm talking with her now, and it's like <laughs> usually you don't get to talk with people you meet on YouTube. <laughs> that's awesome. So, um, but then now I'm doing. Um, primal trust and um 
and you ask me why I'm doing, you haven't asked, but I'll, I'll, I'll ask myself, <laughs> Evans, why are you doing all of these um, brain retrainings? Because God asked me to. Hmm. Because God said, Evans, it's not the destination. It's the journey. And I've got you on one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so um, then, so I started Primal Trust in January of 2024. Through Primal Trust, that is how I came to the Energy Blueprint. Mm -hmm. um, they were offering something, I don't know, it's an online thing, and I signed up for it. And then I started receiving your emails and it said uh, I would get four uh, master classes that were free. So I'm like, okay, let's try the first one. And I watched the first one and said, okay, let's watch the second one. <laughs> and, um, and then I, I was like, and then in the fourth one, you, you basically said, Come join me. And I said, well, God, I don't, um, I don't know. I'm already doing primal trust. I'm already doing so much. And he said, I want you to do it. I said, okay. So I started doing primal. I started doing energy blueprint. And I'm so glad that I did the other brain retrainings before I found the energy blueprint because I don't think I was would be have been able to do the energy blueprint really um with just where I was mm -hmm. um I think I would it would have just it would have scared me mm -hmm. I'm totally <laughs> with but, the amount with the amount of of different strategies lifestyle strategies that i'm encouraging people to to implement <clears throat> yes. it would have just been overwhelming for you yeah because i i wouldn't have been able to even you know with food you know you're talking about food and sleep and all these light therapies and hot and cold i can barely get out of bed you know i can barely have a, a like a clear thought um I, yeah and so so it was like wow you know i think i'm i think i'm i'm ready i'm ready to do this uh you know i don't know how i'm gonna do it totally but i'm like i gave it i gave it a, a it was an option that i felt like was viable mm -hmm. and and plus i i because of all of all that uh, that I had done in the past, I I was like, this sounds good. This sounds really good, and and so I I I'm doing I'm I'm doing the things you're talking about, and um, it's a slow go, but I'm but I'm making progress. Um, what what are some of the things you've noticed benefits from so far? I wrote I wrote down a whole list. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, um, and this is this is through brain retraining, and this is not only just brain retraining. This has been since I did that growth and healing, and but it's been all of it together. Because um, mm -hmm. like I said, it's been a journey. They, uh, they, they all work together. I mean, one thing I wanted to say earlier before yeah. we, before we get to your list is. Even the the capacity that you're building in brain retraining, that that metacognitive awareness, also yeah. meshes really well with uh, with belief in God. And I say this as someone who's not particularly religious myself, um, yeah. of as, as far as belonging to any any organized religion. Um, but you know, even to take an example of you know, something people who who are devoutly religious, when something bad happens to them, when they go through adversity, um, there's often a belief that um, that that God has orchestrated this. This is this is there. There's a, a a deeper plan at work, and that maybe you needed to learn some lesson, or that this was done to facilitate something. 
And even a, a belief like that, as opposed to, let's say, someone who is an atheist who has no belief like that, where they just see it purely as a as a bad, unfortunate circumstance with no positive aspect to it, um, pairs really wonderfully with the capacity for metacognitive awareness. These, these two things are very much synergistic. To be able to get out of your own head and interrupt your own oh, thoughts, to be able to think of alternative things that could be going on behind the scenes of why you're experiencing this adversity and sort of choose to believe um, you know, and, and and not I I don't mean to to trivialize it as sort of just a choice, but to to choose the the path of saying, yes, I believe God that you have have orchestrated this on my behalf, and I need to go through this in order to become stronger, in order to learn lessons, in order to fulfill my my journey, and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, take sorry. Go ahead. I, well, you saying that um, many, many years, I, I saw myself as Job in as the Bible. Job. Yeah, that's Job, interesting. Yeah. That story always I, resonated with me. Yeah, I, 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 I saw myself as Job, but I I didn't see, I saw myself as a Job in, in the trials. Yeah. Um, I didn't see the Job after it. Um, mm. um, but I'm learning that I... Um, that that uh, I have blessings, so many blessings mm -hmm. in my life, and some of them I wasn't even aware of. <laughs> it's it's awesome. Um, and, All right, um, so take, so, take take me to the list. Okay, take me to the <laughs> list. So so I've already said some of these, but I've learned to have a choice. Mm -hmm. I learned to have a choice on what I think, what I do. Um, I, I learned that the diagnoses do not define me. I learned that the symptoms do not define me. I learned that some of the thoughts in my mind are not mine. Um, and I choose not to not to revel in them. <laughs> um, I have become less rigid. Um, I was a perfectionist. Mm. Now, no. <laughs> You know what? If it doesn't happen, guess what? That's okay. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I look at myself from the curious observer and go, is that Evans? Really? Wow. <laughs> and then um, I focus on the blessings in my life. And I choose to look at those instead of all the other things that are going on. Um, I am thankful more um I, I i i laughed but i but i think i laughed more mm -hmm. um uh i no longer um take medications or supplements and i'm so happy <laughs> um Is the it... rage has decreased a lot um i can eat more foods now um I sleep better. Um, I'm still working on having the sleep mean something, but at least I'm sleeping better. What do you um, mean by that? Um, I can sleep through the night. Um, I might wake up once or twice, but I go back to sleep. But you, then, you said you said, did I hear you correctly? You said having the sleep mean something. Yes. What do you mean by that? Um, meaning that I feel refreshed after I've, after I've had a night's sleep mm. and I, I don't totally yet, Yeah, but I know it's coming. Okay. I know it's coming. I just working on the circadian rhythm stuff. Yes, I am. Yeah, I am. And, and I made a lot of progress. So Great. It's just, I'm learning to be patient. Mm -hmm. So, um, I feel like I breathe better. You know, I'd already been doing breathing exercises, but then you have introduced me to more of mm -hmm. them. And so I've been doing those. And I'm and I'm realizing, Ari, that I'm um because of my limitations, um, and I don't see those as bad things, but limitations that I have to 
have to do things differently um, and to realize that I, I don't want to compare myself with other people because mm -hmm. that makes a mess of my life. And so, um, so I take what somebody gives me or what you talk about and I say, okay, how can I change it so it can help me? so I can benefit from it. Um, and so, you know, if you say, let's hold hold the breath for, you know, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, 50, I said, I'll hold the breath for 10 seconds. Wonderful, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good for and, you. And I, and I see that as a good thing because, yeah. you know, there were time I couldn't hold my breath for five seconds, Yeah. you know? Oh. And so, um, yeah, so, <laughs> and then, um, so you, yeah, so you're going through the breathing for energy program as well, as well as the I, awesome. Well, no, it's it's the one that the energy blueprint has. Yeah, yeah, it's it's another program. It's we have the energy okay. blueprint program, and then and then also under the the brand of energy blueprint is also the breathing for energy program. That that's what you're referring to. Okay, I guess I. Yeah, <laughs> you are trust. <laughs> okay then i'll oh yeah i'm trusting you ari great yeah. no I, no I, so um i'm having healthier boundaries um with my with others with myself and and even with god um so yeah it's 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 wonderful i i i realized that i was enmeshed with some people um and, you know uh and and i'm i'm learning not to do that anymore and learning to be my own person. And um, and so, and then, um, you know, the skin sensitivity is getting better. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, uh, oh, I forgot to mention the migraines, uh, severe migraines, and that's getting a lot better. Um, How long have you suffered from migraines for? Oh, goodness. Um, I don't know. I think my, I think my first migraine was I know was in high school. Um, I think it was my junior year of high school. Um, 25, 30 ish years ago. The, yeah, I was about 17, 18 uh -huh. years old. And, and so I'm I'm 48. And you were now. you were born in 76? 76. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah, but that now I'm I'm having maybe one migraine maybe every two months now. Wow. All right. So, yeah. so going from sort of the hellish place that you were not so many years ago, yeah. in terms of 10 out of 10 physical pain, right. rage, you know, extreme mental unwellness, let's say. Yeah. Um, and all the other, you know, the, the gastrointestinal symptoms, the skin related symptoms, um, where, where are you now? Where are you now? Not just in your physical body, but in terms of your mental health, in terms of your relationships, your functionality in life, how does that look like? Drastically different. Um, I forgot I had your, all, your energy levels. Got to add that. Yeah. To that. Okay, chronic yeah. fatigue and and energy levels to the mix as well. All right, go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm able to to do things. Um, I'm able to get out there. You know, like I said, I'm I'm learning to play pickleball. Um, and I'm able I'm able to do it, and not and not completely have a fall apart while playing or after and I'm able to do that and yeah I still might be tired but I'm still able to do it and beforehand I was in no way just even just even thinking about playing pickleball would have taken me out wow I mean just thinking about getting you know there was a time all right that just even thinking about getting out of the bed, I was toast. <laughs> I was, and you know, just taking a shower, just brushing my teeth, doing anything, just having somebody ask me a question, 
and I've got to think of an answer. Right. No. Wow. My body just shut down. So being able to do all that is a huge change, Ari. It's huge. And um so uh I'm realizing that I um my daily pain level has dropped. Um, you know, I, it's still there. I mean, I, I feel pain, but it's not overwhelming. Um, uh, I don't feel like it's a chain around me anymore. Yeah. Um, I feel like that I have, I can breathe better. I can move, you know, one of the, one of the mantras I say is, um, I move with ease. I breathe with ease. I live with ease. I laugh with ease. All this stuff, and 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 it's it's helping. It's yeah. helping, and and yeah. So and I, I I want to make sure we mention the person who introduced us, which is Coach Ollie. How yes. how has it how has it been working with him? It's been well. I just. He's helped me to to uh, kind of understand the program more, um, and and uh, help me to be able to take little bite sized pieces of it and not seeing the whole thing as a huge animal. Yeah. Um, but just you know, um, and yeah. So beautiful. And he's he's helped you to put a lot of these strategies to work in your life. He has. Yeah. Yes, yes. And he has a good sense of humor too, which I'm sure is also <laughs> well interesting thing is 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 you know he's he's British. Yeah and and I'm, and so our humor is totally different. Yeah. <laughs> but he's still funny. <laughs> <laughs> um is there anything that comes to your mind as far as well, actually one more question before we get there. Um what what does the future look like for you? What what do you you know? Given that you've had such radical change in in so many different aspects of your health and functionality, how are you or how are you and God conceptualizing what the future holds for you in the rest of your life? It's in His hands. Mm. I'm not. I'm. I'm. Um. Other than I, I know I'm going to be okay. Where whatever happens, even if I even if I died died tomorrow, I'm okay. I mean, Andy, even if I ended up back in the bed, I'm okay. Mm. Yeah, I'm. It's I'm going to have a tough time with it, but I'm okay because it, it that that doesn't define me. And so in thinking about what I want to do in my future or what's going to happen, I don't know what's going to happen because to me, I'm not in control and I don't really don't want to be in control um, because he's got it and I'm okay with that. Can I make I a suggestion know. to you? Sure. You have a very powerful personal story and journey that you've been through and yeah. I, I think it can help a lot of people and so i think that the more that you can engage in opportunities to connect with people and share your story and maybe find people who are going through similar things even if it's not the same specific symptoms and condition but the more you can immerse yourself in those kinds of opportunities which is what we're doing right now in this moment by having you on this podcast uh, oh, thank but the, I, I think the more you can use your journey to to help others i think that might be a, a beautiful gift to share with the world for for the rest of your life maybe not as your full-time job but as something that that you do well that's interesting you talk about job because i'm not People ask me what I do, you know, when I'm out. And for a while, for a lot of times, it, it, I was like a deer in headlights because, you know, I didn't do anything. I didn't feel like 
And uh, but now it's interesting you, you're you're saying this already because now you said, so what is it you do? I said, I'm into brain retraining. And they go, yeah. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll say, I work for four companies. <laughs> and they're like, you do? I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, I enjoy it. It's great. And it's awesome. I don't have to say anything more. It's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> what are the four companies? Well, it's the ones I've done. The the four brain, like the DNRS, the vital side, the uh, primal trust, and then energy blueprint. It's not <laughs> totally a a brain retraining, but I link it all together. So. Does that mean I need to start paying you if you work for my company? <laughs> this is news to me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you already were. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Evans, um, the last thing I want to ask you is, you know, given everything you've gone through, you know, and and how much brain retraining and and mindset retraining work that you've done, yeah. is there anything that comes to your mind? could be one thing could be a couple things that come to your mind as far as um lessons learned or insights learned or 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 mindsets that you'd recommend to people who are maybe struggling maybe not with the the full extreme of everything you've gone through uh which is pretty rare um but somebody who's going through some of this stuff to some degree like what what are the biggest things that you'd like to leave them with Wow, that's a great question. Um, oh, wow, thunder. Um, don't give up hope. Uh, even when it, it seems really, really dark sometimes, um, there's a light. There is, I mean, we're all, we're all put in this earth for something. And I, I believe we're all created. And so we we matter. And um and I um I just I know I know that 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 if I can matter, if if all the things I've been through, all the rejection, people looking at me strange, people looking at me like I like like I, I'm not human sometimes. Um, and they're all lies. That's all lies. Um, and and I, I do matter. And and I believe that that everybody does matter. And and so I I tell them, hey, I, keep going, keep trying. And and if you and if something doesn't work for you. Don't give up. There's something else there. Maybe, maybe one, you know, maybe one brain retraining thing doesn't fit for you. There are others out there. Uh, maybe form of, uh, you know, uh, something isn't fitting for you. We'll try something else. But keep trying. Keep going. And um, and um, and reach out like you talked about reaching out. Um, uh, I'm glad that I'm reaching out more. Um, and uh, and I will say this, uh, and I know this is not what you asked me, uh, but I used to get really, really nervous um, when I first started these Zoom calls. I mean, I just got so nervous. And now I'm not nervous at all. Um, and that's been, what, three years now? And so, yeah, it's awesome. And so I I even amaze myself sometimes about things that are going on. I'm like, wow, this is really cool. So I think I've been open to opportunities. And so I would, so I would tell somebody, be open to something, even if you don't understand it. Just be open to the possibilities. Evans, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really enjoyed this conversation and um, this was a, a nice change of pace for me. And it was, it was really enjoyable for me. You have a really powerful story and thank you for having the courage to come on here and, and share your story. And 
I'm certain that there's people listening to this that are going to be helped by you doing this. So thank you. Well, thank you, Ari. Thank you so much for the energy blueprint. I appreciate you doing it. And one other thing, when you you say you are a, like a a geek and a nerd and a, you you research stuff, I'm right there with you, buddy. I'm, <laughs> I love, when you talk about the research, man, I yeah. So <laughs> thank you. Yeah, my my pleasure, Evan. Thank you for for applying my work. Thank you again for coming on here and sharing your story. I really appreciate it, and all the best to you in the future. Hey, thank you so much, Ari. Appreciate it.